or colour. Thomas Harvey is the Justice Project Director at the Advancement Project National Office, an NGO that focuses on racial justice issues. He joins us uh, by Skype from Los Angeles. Thanks very much for being with us. So, on, just to go back on to the, to the question of the, the George Floyd P Justice and Policing Act, uh, the, the deadline set or hoped for deadline for, uh, for President Biden hasn't been passed. Do you think it will eventually get through the Senate? Yes, I think it will get through the Senate with some compromises, unfortunately, it will, that will make it less effective. But I do think it will eventually be passed, yes. And so it includes things like um, investing in police training, banning the use of chokeholds, uh, establishing a national database of police misconduct. What sort of things in there w would make the biggest difference? Well, unfortunately, none of those things that you just mentioned would have saved George Floyd's life. I think it's a, it's an unfortunate constructed bill that actually adds $750 million to policing across the country. Um, 15 to 20 million people went out on the streets last year with the demand to uh, defund the police, and this bill actually adds more money to it. Uh, there's nothing about this bill that would have prevented George Floyd's murder. It wasn't because of lack of data transparency. It wasn't because of a no-knock raid. It wasn't because there wasn't a database of um, national police misconduct. The chief of police in Minneapolis knew very well the long history and the 18 complaints against Derek Chauvin. Uh, when the, that chief of police sent Derek Chauvin out to police low-income communities of color, and George Floyd was was murdered by Derek Chauvin uh, in spite of that knowledge. So there's nothing in here, unfortunately, although it's, a, it's symbolically important, and I think it might offer some comfort to the families and other families of people who've had someone killed by the police. But this alone will do virtually nothing to prevent the next killing. Uh, it's interesting, you, you mentioned in passing that uh, phrase, that the def defund the police, where, where people have suggested that um, they should move funding from the police forces towards uh, social services. But, but in one example, for, for instance, in Los Angeles, they did reduce the police budget, uh, and now they're saying they've had a huge increase in the last year in violent crime, and they haven't, they're, they're now saying they're going to increase the police budget and rehire police officers. So what does that example tell us? If anything, what does that example tell us? And are there other things that need to be done as more of a priority to to try and solve all this? Well, I think it's important to note that police do not actually prevent violent crime, what we call violent crime in America. By their own data, they spend about 7% of their time working on what we would characterize as uh, violent crime. Most of their time is spent on things like traffic tickets and responding to calls about local disturbances that can be handled in many other ways. They police the lives of people who are houseless um, in, in Los Angeles, um, most um, specifically, they recently just cleared a park of a community of people who were living alone by violence and force with the police department, cleared them, tried to get them into housing, and now have put up a fence around the park so that people cannot live there in the community that they form. So I think it's a, it's a mis... I think a lot of people have the impression that police prevent violence from happening, and nothing could be further from the truth. Policing in itself is not designed even to prevent a violent crime. That's not their goal. The goal is to exert social control over communities of color and protect property. That's their primary goal in America.